हेलो अंदर की शुभोदय डे फिफ्टीन की स्वागत मरी लाइव इंटराक्ट वेबिनार स्ट्रीमिंग ऑन यूट्यूब अंड फेसबुक बाय एस अफिशियल चैनल्स सो टुडे टॉपिक इज गिविंग इंस्ट्रक्शंस फॉर द क्लास रूम बाय डॉक्टर पूर्णिमा रवि गारू चेन्नई ई वेलकम पूर्णिमा रवि गारू गुड मार्निंग अंड वेलकम टू टुडे सैशन अंड वि मिस् एम रचना जी हेच राजेट कड़प आलो रचना गार गुड मार्निंग अंड वेलकम टू टुडे सैशन ई रिक्वेस्ट पोकूरी श्रीनिवास गार टू इंट्रड्यूस रिसोर्स पर्सन टू दि व्यूवर्स थैंक यू yeah good morning andhra pradesh uh, sorry for the delay uh, we have here with us dr r pornima teacher trainer and she is an uh, assessor and facilitator for the international school award and she is uh, she has certification from uh, university of cambridge and queensland and harvard graduate school of education punma ma'am and we are really uh, happy to have you here and i also tell you that punma ma'am uh, receives exclusive badge in the microsoft uh, uh, educator community uh, and uh, such a versatile genius Um, uh, and she has a um, uh, you know teammate uh, M Rachna from Kadapa is also engaged in this session. Ma'am, we uh, welcome you both for this session. Please start your session. Thank you, Shrinivas Garu and Ismail Garu for the wonderful introduction. Uh, thank you for having us today to deliver today's interesting session. Good morning to all the teachers who have joined us. Welcome to webinar fifteen. So in today's session, we'll explore a key aspect of classroom transaction, which is giving instructions effectively. Has it ever happened when you have planned your lesson extremely well with some well-developed teaching learning materials? However, when you go to your classroom and begin your session, midway you realize that it's not quite going on track. some of the issues that i have also faced in my classrooms are confused students who are less attentive in the activity or the task given sometimes to extend the time limit let's say i planned an activity for 10 minutes but it takes almost 20 minutes to wrap it up or also sometimes incomplete work from students despite the fact that all students were given the right amount of time we still have incomplete submissions and lastly passive participation these are the students who pretend to be part of the activity or the task but are not quite engaged let's just say like mentally absent but physically present well the reasons for these issues could be many but one of the reasons is as simple as ineffective classroom instruction so let us look at ways to address this issue and ensure that we can identify ways to solve these issues the objectives for this session are to we'll reflect on the importance of instruction in the classroom we'll identify the features of effective instruction we'll explore a few techniques to instruct a lot more meaningfully and we'll ex examine the through a wonderful demonstration which will be presented by rachna garu towards the end of the session let's look at the importance of instruction as i go through each of these bullet points i'm sure all teachers who is watching this uh, session would agree with me like this firstly instructions provide a clear road map to the activity and task it's very important to ensure that students are not confused or aware of what exactly is expected of them so instructions create a map a blueprint as to what will happen for the next 15 minutes or 10 minutes by clearly elaborating as to what is expected next is they raise awareness on the learning outcomes that are planned most of the time we think instructions is all about just sit down stand up enter the classroom but have you ever thought um, in a way that your learning outcomes are achieved we we'll look at ways we could do so we could also raise awareness in terms of for a teacher right she can identify 
if students were engaged in the learning process, that is assess progress. So let's say if I have an instruction as to complete the task in 10 minutes, it means I can have a checklist to see if those 10 minutes are made good use of. Students are aware of what is expected out the expected outcome. Let's just say uh, the expected outcome is the completion of a true or false activity or a one word question or a pair demonstration or a group discussion. It also promotes effective classroom management. Instructions is not just commands, but an informative bit that to give to your students. It's an information that is collected through a lesson. Some such information is time, student participation, so if you're doing pair work or group work, or if they're going to work individually, and how are they going to present the task? Will they be expressing through a debate or a discussion, or would they step forward and discuss in front of everyone? So these are key areas of classroom management as to how you manage your students. It also aids in sequencing stages for an activity or a task. Supposing there's a complex activity which involves a lot of stages and procedures, especially. instructions would be beneficial to make them bite-sized into small chunks so that there's one stage, once you complete the first stage, you move on to the next stage and you end towards the end, you complete it and finish off with a paper. So it helps to create that sequence in the classroom. Lastly, it helps to communicate directions. Useful use of resources, especially, like you're pointing out to a page. Even on a page, if there's a particular box in which the information is given, get instructions like that. For instance, look at the information given in the blue box. Look at the information below the picture. So you could use instructions to point out key areas, facts, objects, etc. So when we talk about instructions, we're not just delivering instructions, but effective ones. Let's see how we could do it effectively. Firstly, instructions have to be clear and specific. It must indicate an outcome or a result. Do, it's, it's almost like an action that is expected of. Like shut the door, yes, the door is shut. Complete the activity given on page 12. The result is all the activities are completed. So ensure there's a cause and effect in your instruction. Next, you need to be audible. When we speak about audible, we may have a loud voice, but we also have to be mindful if our students are prepared to receive the instruction. So how can that be all made possible? We look at a few strategies in the session. But however, make note that your instructions have to be audible and that doesn't really depend on your voice alone, but also the preparedness of your learners. Are they seated in their place? Is, are all the, all the children are like attentive towards you? Or is their attention directed towards you? These are the areas that you have to focus on. Next, it has to be age appropriate with simple language. Sometimes instructions can be very lengthy. When the length is too much, your mind automatically switches off. The words that you use also make an important role. Use words that are understood by the learner. Use commands that are understood and something that they've done before. Supposing they haven't, you could always model it to them. Use age appropriate instructions, which also goes not just to the language, but also with the competency levels of your learners. The competency levels of a first standard child would be way different from the competency levels of a class six child. Next is using gestures and prompts. Communicating instructions is a form of exchanging information. It's a natural process of communication. So why not use other aspects apart from language that is such as gestures and prompts? You could, a simple way is you could get an attention by clap. I'm sure most of you all would have done that in your classroom as well. But there are many other ways as well. You could also use hand, your 
hands to gesture to sit down, come in, open your books. So use gestures and props as much as you can. Next, the only goal for your instruction is to pass on information from your lesson plan, which talks elaborately about your activities and tasks. So it has to be informative. You might just be wondering that if you talk about just tasks and activity, what happens to those simple areas like be quiet, keep silent? Well, we are not going to be looking at all these areas in isolation. They work together. Remember, there are two aspects to it. One are a set of instructions which are spontaneous that you cannot predict while making a lesson plan. Let's just say, keep silent. You might not know if your class would be noisy or not. Come in. Those are the commands that are spontaneous. But there are certain instructions that have to be prepared well in advance. Those are related to your tasks and activities. We look at combining both of these aspects today. Next, your instructions have to be sequenced. A lot of experienced teachers have said, always maintain your instructions to threes. Three instructions, three key instructions which covers all the information. Beyond three, it gets too much for the receiver to understand. They would not, they get confused and they not pay attention simply, which also gives the reasons for the problems that we discussed in the previous slide. So keep it short, simple, and sequenced. Staged very well as to first you do this, second, third. Next is ICQs. ICQs are instruction checking questions. So now that you give your instructions, it is very important that you check if all the students have understood them. So every instruction that you plan for a task and activity must be, yeah, must be supported with ICQs. ICQs could be between two to three questions that should be enough. They should be related to the page number or the time given or how are you working in pairs or in groups simple instructions or in simple questions such as let us look at an example of all those uh, characteristics that we just discussed so instruction in a classroom transaction look at the image on the left it is funneled with three important areas firstly instructions are related to the concepts that you are handling it is related to your learning outcomes as well. It is also directly related to the tasks and activities planned. All three areas have to be prepared very well in advance. Also be mindful of the spontaneous instruction which comes through practice in terms of classroom management where you ask students to be quiet or open their books or be silent, watch you while you're giving the demo. These things happen simultaneously. However, when you plan your lesson plan, the, uh, the aspects suggested on the left are areas you'll have to focus on. Let's take an EVL, EVS lesson from Standard 4, Chapter 2 on Green World. Green World is an interesting lesson which talks about a variety of plants that are available, that are around us, with a, which has variances in soil types and the way they grow. So that's the lesson that we're going to be talking about. Now I have come up with a learning outcome which involves a visit to the garden. So my learning outcome is to identify, label and chart the types of plants. The concept and resources would be like based on types of plants, right? And the tasks and activities, the first task would be to visit the garden and identify different types of plants. So what would my classroom instruction be? It would be, students, come form a line here. Once I do that, I can successfully, sorry, I can successfully pair them. My strategy that I use them once they form a line is, while one student will be a flower, let's say rose, the other child could be a leaf. Then comes a sunflower, a leaf, lily and leaf. So there are a number of flowers which are accompanied with a leaf. So they form a pair. I check. Do all flowers have leaves? I then circulate a worksheet which has a task. Now this is the task that they will have to come have the garden visit. It's not that they just go to the wall, go to the garden and come back. 
but they have a purpose to go to the garden as well. Look at the worksheet. We will go on a nature walk. Nature walk. Now, these instructions specify as to what is expected from the students. The ICQs would be, are you working individually? So if I get a response from everyone saying no, which means the instructor, do you have to identify plants? Yes. And then you see, I can sign, maybe there's a chaos when they step outside the classroom. I give a spontaneous instruction stating, silence, please. And probably they go out and go uh, finish their worksheets and they're coming back to the classroom. It's obvious that there'll be a chaos when they come back as well. That's when I'd say again, silence, please come inside. I, once they come slowly come inside, I direct them, sit with your partner. Your answers in your group. Discuss and analyze the different parts based on their stems and make a chart. You have 10 minutes. Now, if you look at all these instructions, don't read them together. Try to understand in the classroom transaction situation. So they first get inside. I wait for them to settle down. Once they settle down, I tell, share your answers in your group. Now, before they share their answers in a group, I'll see if they're all paying attention and then tell them what happens next. That is, as a, as a pair, they came up with the answers. They've shared it with the group. And the outcome, the end outcome, would be a chart that they present as a group. You have 10 minutes to do so. Now, some of the techniques that were used in the activity we just discussed. The first technique was use of imperatives. Imperatives are sentences used to give orders, commands, warnings. However, sometimes if you just say, shut the door, it may sound rude or open your books. So what we usually do is add a please. So please be quiet. Please sit down. Please stand up. Please stop talking. Time. So you add a please along with an imperative. Now these imperatives when we use, it's important to note that they're short. They aren't too long with sequences. The next technique that we use is accommodating modal verbs in our instructions. Now, there are two modal verbs that we use, that is can, could, or will, and would. The other modal, other modal verbs like might and should are not uh, cannot be used while giving instructions directly. Right? So you could use it in terms of make like you should complete it by tomorrow you could use it, but you can use like probably might. Might is more on a doubtful uh, uh, context. So framing instruction using modal verbs also brings in more character to your instruction in terms of your intention, of how uh, strong you are in terms of receiving the output. Some examples could be, like I said, you could also add, to mix it down as an imperative, may sound rude. You could make it more subtle by adding could. Could you please sit down? Could you arrange the books on the shelf, Ravi? Can you share the answers to the class, Jaya? Will you shut the door, please? Would you wait in line until the bell rings? So use modal verbs by giving instructions. Next is use of simple phrases. These phrases are often called as starter phrases. Like, I want you to, I'd like you to. So, for example, children, I want you to complete activity six on page 32. Children, I'd like to check all your note, notebooks after school. Radha, please collect them from everybody. So, note that I've used a starter phrase and also a few modals here and there. So, you could combine all of these techniques when you're coming up with your instructions. Next is sequence. Like we discussed earlier, sometimes classroom transactions can be divided into different stages. These stages will require sub-activities. Now, these activities might also have a procedure. <clears throat> so it's important that you sequence well from one activity to the next activity to the next. So sequence them into small chunks so that they know have a mental checklist 
When activity one is done, check, they move on to activity two, and then they go to activity three. Like in the example given in the EVS lesson, they first form a line and they have formed pairs. They have a worksheet to complete uh, in their garden work. Once they finish the worksheet, they get back and sit in their groups. In their groups, they discuss their answers. And after they discuss their answers, they come up with a chart work. Now, towards the end of the chart work, maybe each group can come and do a presentation. Now, notice the amount of instructions that have had to be given. So you could check back on your reading material and see how these instructions have been sequenced. An easier way would, you, would be by using firstly or first, secondly or second, and end it with then. You could not go with four, three, and, and, and so on and so forth. It would be incorrect. So you stop with secondly and end it with then. So keep it simple with three instructions. For example, children, firstly, make sure you're sitting in the right group. Secondly, check if your group has all the materials required for the experiment. And then start discussing the problem with each other. Now, I, in a regular classroom transaction, I wouldn't be doing it as fast as I'm doing it right now. I would definitely after give, I would definitely be looking at my learners when I finish my first instruction. Children, firstly, make sure you're sitting in the right group. That is when I'd be looking around, making note of if everyone's seated, if they're paying attention towards me. And that is when the spontaneous instructions come. Be quiet, pay attention, listen to me carefully. So that's something that would come with practice. But keep these instructions that are either way required for the task well prepared in advance. Now, ways of giving instructions. You could give instructions with your hand. <clears throat> For instance, we are all too used to come, go, but also when you're going to give a listening activity, point towards your ears, listen carefully. Are your ears working? Look at me, look at the bow, bow gestures. Keep silent is something that we often use. You could also, one thing that I like doing in my classroom with little children especially is Gandhiji's three monkeys. When I want them, if they're, if they're being too naughty, I'd probably pick a child and tell, who's, who's the monkey in the classroom who's making noise? So for the next 10 seconds, we find children make, doing this gesture. So that immediately makes them all aware that they have to pay attention or else they'll have, they'll, they'll have to, they'll be thrown straight in front of the class or I'll have a sub-activity. So uh, listen carefully, I'd have a gesture. So use gestures with your hands. The next is signboards. Signboards are also very interesting. Creating signboards for common instructions with, with the use of a flashcard, put an ice cream stick to it. These are also available online, but you could make them as well. What I do with my students is I don't always give the instructions from my end. Simple things like, please be quiet. I would give it to one child in a club and he, had, he or she would have a noise monitor. Whenever the noise goes high, the, the sign pops up. So that way, every child gets an opportunity in every class for a different signboard. It could be, please stand in line behind me. So they stand with the signboard and behind them, the line is formed. So simple signboards that can be used by you and also your learners according to the context and the task. The next thing is use of props. I know you would see, think that these are like rattles used by babies. Have you ever noticed how noisy they can actually be and how loud they are? And the sounds are so different, very different from, from any other sounds around that the moment you start making this sound by a rotating motion or whatever it is, it would gap attention. It would also make condition learners to understand that they need to focus on what is happening at your end. So try using one of these rattles. You could also use bells in the classroom. So after every instruction, I do a bell rattle so that they're mentally prepared that the next instruction is going to be given or the time is up or the, uh, the task can begin now. So that you could do it in different ways like that. Let's look at classroom management. Now, when you look at classroom management, important, it is important to know there are three stages. One is preparatory stage, next is the delivery stage, and the post-delivery stage. 
Now, in all these stages, these areas such as classroom behavior, which is spontaneous instructions or be quiet, sit down, stand up, that would be covered. Task-based instructions in terms of page numbers, the activities that they're going to be doing, and how are they going to be presenting information, those instructions would be included. And lastly, ICQs. Check if they've understood it all. Let us look at all of these prayer stages. The first being the preparatory stage. It is the first stage, the moment you step into the classroom, you need to see if your children are prepared. If they finished drinking their water, if they've all settled inside, or if there was a class earlier, if they've kept the books away. Gather their attention, get their to instruct accordingly. The student gets the student, the teacher gets the students to settle down and ensure that they pay attention before instructions for the task is shared. So I would say, I'm going to count to 10. Please take your seat and settle down. And then I'll start 10. Nine, eight, seven, and then I go on to one. So by then, they, they have to ensure that they go back to their places or they've kept away their things. Another thing that I would do to instruct is time is up, go back to your places. Or are all, all of you ready? Listen carefully. So these are spontaneous instructions that would be given in the preparatory stage. In the next stage, that is the delivery stage. This is where the instruction that we have prepared well in advance would come. So the first thing that you would do is signpost. Once you're all prepared, you'd, you'd inform them as to what happens next. The teacher presents the text or the resource to the students. She maintains eye contact and checks if all the students are paying attention. The teacher points out the task or the parts of the material to familiarize the students with what they're going to work on. So I'd probably tell, when you talk about signposting, it could be having a book or the worksheet. Place it right to your chin level. Look around and show everyone. This is the worksheet that we are going to be doing. This is the book that we are going to be handling. Ensure that you do a three, not 360, but 180, sort of an angle of the resource and keep it always to your chin level. That way the student who's sitting right at the end also gets to see the material. Once they do so, point out if it is the first activity, second activity, if the information is on a blue box, point out on the page, ensure that again it is in your chin level and you're showing it to everyone. Maintain eye contact to, inch, to see if they're paying attention towards you. So that's when I say look at the worksheet. Firstly, read the article present in the green box. And then secondly, complete task four. So that way I'm gesturing and also signposting the material. Uh, so after that, I give them another sequence in which they have to discuss their answers with their partner. Once you give the instruction, it is important to demonstrate one sample question or whatever the task is. The first question should be exclusively done by you. That demonstration will help the child who might not have understood very well to get an understanding of how to go about doing the activity or task. After the demonstration, check with an ICQ. Uh, ICQ would be, would you do the worksheet in pairs? No. And then would you, oh, how, how much time do you have? You'd say 10 minutes. So that way, when you have a chorus answer being given or you could ask individually, uh, Ramesh, how much time do we have to finish this task? He would give back an answer as 10 minutes. So when he gives that response, maybe the child who was not aware of the time would get the understand the time limit from Ramesh. So always check with your instructions. The next is classroom management in terms of post delivery. So when they are doing the task, when they're engaged in doing completing the worksheet, you go around and see if everybody is understood once again. That can happen when you see that while some children are <clears throat> completing the activity, some are a little hesitant to complete. Check with them and help them. That's where you facilitate and make them come come on to where the other students are and complete the task. Once they've finished it all, you need instructions here as well. What do they do next? They would probably, you could get a collective whole class feedback. Please raise your hand if you need my help. That would be during the presentation. Are you ready? Let us discuss the answers. So when I say, are you 
to discuss the answers, you could use a bell here or a rattle or a clap. So in, it's important to keep all the uh, techniques or the ways that we discussed earlier and use it in wherever we can find the need to. So don't treat them in isolation, use a combination of them. Rahi, can you please collect a workbook from all the students? This could be towards the end when the session is all completed. Now note that when the last instruction that's mentioned here, where I uh, uh, request Rahim to collect all the books, I also prepare the students for the next class. So that when the teacher who comes to the next class does not have to give an instruction again to take their books away, right? So you're preparing them that, okay, the activity is finished, keep your things away. So you could look at instructions that way as managing them and preparing them for the next class as well and completing your engagement fully. Now, important aspects of instructions. The first thing that is crucial is inform the page number, the workbook that or worksheet that they're going to be using. What is the material that they will be working on? It would definitely have a page number. If it doesn't, you would have to make a page number for it. The type of activity that they'll be doing. We are going to be doing a fill up activity or, or we're going to be doing a simple Q&A activity or a coloring activity. Mention the type of activity. Inform them well in advance. Ways of working. Inform them if they're going to be working in pairs or if they're going to be working individually or in their small groups. Inform them these three important areas along with the time limit because that is going to indicate how well your plan is effective in the classroom. So, so towards the last 30 seconds or 60 seconds, the timekeeper goes around and probably gives a countdown towards the end as well. The keeper as well. So there's an example that I've given here. Students, please look at page 11. I want you to work in pairs, right? So that's when I pause and I look around. I can insert an ICQ right here as well. What page are we working on rather? She would say page 11. Okay. So firstly, complete the sums given in task four. Secondly, check your answers in your group, <clears throat> in your group. And then submit your worksheets to me. You have 10 minutes to complete the task. So again, my ICQs would correspond with my instruction. Please make note that in the, in the live uh, session right now, I'm going through very fast. But in a live situation in your classroom, you would have to pace it according to the competency levels and understanding level of your learner. Maybe they are for the first time getting instructions in English then I strongly suggest to have an ICQ after every instruction. Slow it down a little bit. Ask two to three, one person, ask two to three people. Recap the instruction as well. The more you give that exposure, you'd see the lesser the time you'll take to give instructions in the future. So be very mindful to ensure that it's age appropriate and the students are able to understand. So these are the structures that are suggested. What you as a teacher would have to do is to accommodate based on your learner needs. Check at every step. Check if they've understood. Next. These are suggested ways that you can give instructions. These are examples for every stage that I've given. Let me just give instructions probably from the preparatory stage. Please get inside. Keep your books inside. Be quiet. Take your books out or your homework books out. Silence, please. Next is the delivery stage. Like I said, when it's very important that you have a demonstration here and you have uh, also, uh, what do you call it? You have IC, ICQs that you have with the demonstration. And most importantly, signposting. Show the material to everybody around in the classroom. So look at the picture, look, listen to the, watch the video, uh, listen carefully to the audio tape. So this, these are the areas that you focus on the delivery stage. Lastly, is the post-delivery stage. Post-delivery stage, again, when I said you're wrapping up, so please submit your books or the worksheets. Ramu, collect all the books and worksheets, please. Come here and present your answers to the class. So ensure you're doing two things. One is the feedback, as well as you're preparing them for the next class as well. 
we will now have a demonstration with a sample lesson taken from one of your textbooks which would be delivered by rachana garu i request rachana garu to present her demonstration prekshakulandriki prabhata pranamam i am rachana working as school assistant in government high school rajampet kadpa district in today's demonstration i am going to present a sample transaction classroom transaction of class 2 lesson 1 from math textbook new textbook let me share my screen yeah yeah okay thank you sir okay before starting my presentation i would i would like to start with a quote uh, actually i would like to start my demo with a quotation this quote i quote your mind without instruction can no more bear fruit than can your field however fertile without cultivation by marcus tullius so the instructions plays an important role in the classroom transaction so uh for uh, for my uh, transaction i have taken maths at class 2 lesson 1 so for this lesson i have planned a flower market activity in this we have one trigger picture so here in this trigger picture so here well, we can ask some questions showing the trigger picture so kotta pustakallo manam english lo ne kaakunda maths lo science lo kuda oka big picture ledha trigger picture tho mana lesson start chestunnam ఇది కొత్త మ్యాథ్స్ బుక్ లోంచి తీసుకున్న ఒక పేజ్ అనమాట ఇక్కడ ఫస్ట్ షెల్ వి కౌంట్ అనేటువంటి లెసన్ క్లాస్ టూ లో ఇక్కడ రెండు క్వశ్చన్స్ ఉన్నాయి వాట్ డూ యూ అబ్జర్వ్ ఇన్ ద పిక్చర్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద చిల్డ్రన్ డూయింగ్ వి కెన్ యాడ్ సమ్ మోర్ క్వశ్చన్స్ సో వాట్ హౌ మెనీ గర్ల్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ హౌ మెనీ బాయ్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ లైక్ దట్ అండ్ దెన్ హియర్ ఇక్కడ ఈ లెసన్ లో ఉన్న సారాంశం ఏంటంటే పిల్లలు కౌంట్ చేయాలి లెక్కించాలన్నమాట ఇంగ్లీష్ లో వన్ టూ త్రీ వాళ్ళు కౌంట్ చేసుకోవాలి ఇక్కడ జయ విజయ్ మేరీ కిషోర్ వీళ్ళందరూ కూడా ఇండిపెండెన్స్ డే కోసం అని కొన్ని ఫ్లవర్స్ ని కలెక్ట్ చేసుకుంటారు వాటిని అన్నిటిని వాళ్ళు గార్లెండ్ గా కట్టుకుంటారు అనమాట ఇప్పుడు చేశారు అనేది కౌంట్ చేయడమే వాళ్ళ యాక్టివిటీ ఇది అయిపోయిన తర్వాత ఇది టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ లెసన్ అంతా అయిపోయిన తర్వాత చేసేటువంటి ఒక యాక్టివిటీ దిస్ ఇస్ రివిజన్ యాక్టివిటీ అండ్ దెన్ yes today's task is students are divided into small groups because students are divided into small groups group a ki addition group b subtraction and group c division each group gets Rachna, one madam, color start madam i request you to start from the beginning activity plan and all these things okay sir so from the activity plan okay thank you sir so here we selected one activity about a flower market the objectives of the activity is to understand mathematical symbols like plus <coughs> minus divided by and solve the problems to practice mathematical operations through an activity so ikkada pillalki mathematics symbol plus minus divided by ivanni kuda ardham aitha anamata activity dwara and then introduction teacher presents a puppet show to introduce the characters vijay and devi textbook lo vijay devi ki 23 flowers ichi vaatni two garlands cheyamantadu so a characters ni vallaku baaga ardham ayyatattu cheyadam kosam oka puppet show ni manam chestunnam anamata here vallaki enti task ante students are divided into small groups group a ki addition group b ki subtraction group c ki division and each group gets one color flower each group gets a pattern for addition subtraction and division and prepare a garland for vijay and devi so they have to prepare a garland anamata vijay ki devi once students prepare one type of garland that means addition they move to the next table and complete all the operations students present their garlands to the whole class so ikkada manam teeskunna 20 tl lo entante puppets అంతేకాకుండా ఇలాంటి పేపర్ ఫ్లవర్స్ తర్వాత దారము తర్వాత ఫ్లాష్ కార్డ్స్ తర్వాత సమ్స్ ఇవన్నీ సో టైం లిమిట్ వచ్చి ఫిఫ్టీన్ మినిట్స్ 
the time limit is 15 minutes for this activity. Well, step one. So here we must introduce the puppet show. So the teacher gets the student's attention to introduce the activity. So to grab the attention of the students, we must give some instructions. It's time to begin. Please stop talking. Teacher introduced the context of the flower market. She informed students of two guests from the market. Children, have you been to a flower market? We have two special guests from there today who need our help. Then the teacher instructs the students to pay attention before the puppet show is presented. Pay attention, everybody. Vijay and Devi are here with a request. And the puppet show. In the puppet show, so we have to tell them what is there. So here, procedure, uh, puppet show, Vijay asks Devi to make few garlands using different flowers. Devi requests the students to help her solve the flower combinations using addition, subtraction, and division. Children, are you ready to make garlands? The teacher divides the class into three groups, red, yellow, and blues. All the yellows come here, all the reds sit here, and then take, take your seat. So a teacher must use hand gestures for grouping. And then here, We'll have a video of PPT, the puppet show. Uh, that's completed, ma'am, step two. So here, for step two, setting up the task. After the puppet show, Vijay asked uh, Devi to make two garlands out of 23 flowers. And she don't know how to count the numbers. She requests the students to help her. So students will help her in counting the numbers. And he also requested, he gave so many instructions to make the garlands. He said that after every five flowers, you have to keep one leaf. So these are the instructions Devi got and she requested the students. And then here, the task for the students, the entire students. The teacher makes the students to sit according to their groups in their assigned tables or assigned places. So here, instructions are, sit down in your place. It's time to begin. Please stop talking. And she checks if all the material for the activity is available. So here, we mentioned already the TLM for the activity. Straws, like this, straws, paper straws, and then uh, scissors, paper flowers, like that. So uh, she checks all the uh, things. So and then, uh, Table flowers, yarn, straws, crayon, a pair of scissors on your table. So here instructions. Check if you have all the uh, things on your place or on your table. And then next. So worksheet. So anta check chess kun in tarvata, walandar ni da in tarvata, places ka groups ka divide chess in tarvata, ye bi silga. So here procedure is demo, a flashcard. For example, you have 10 blue flowers and seven red flowers. Make a garland with three red flowers and six blue flowers. How many flowers are there in your garland? So they have to count the flowers and tell the answer. Procedure. Here, the teacher signposts the instructions, uh, instructs students to solve the problem given in the flashcard. It could be an addition or a division problem. So here we can give the instruction, put away the material, pay attention, individually solve the problems given in the flashcard. First, you have to solve the problems individually and then discuss the answers with your in your group and fill the worksheets. These are the instructions. And the time limit, you have only 10 minutes to complete. Then she solves one problem on the board. So here, ICQs, are you working in your group? Fantastic. How much time do you have? Then she'll get the answer, 10 minutes. Next slide. Step four, setting up the activity. Here, teacher checks if students have completed step three. After completing the step three, she checks if students are ready for the next step. Step 
చేస్తారా లేదా పిల్లలు అంత మెటీరియల్ అంతా ఉందా ఆ ఫ్లాష్ కార్డ్స్ అవన్నీ ఉన్నాయా లేదా అనేది కూడా చూసుకోవాలన్నమాట సో ఆర్ యూ రెడీ టు మేక్ ద గార్లాండ్స్ ఫర్ దేవి అండ్ విజయ్ హ్యావ్ ఆల్ త్రీ గ్రూప్స్ కంప్లీటెడ్ ద వర్క్ షీట్స్ సో ఫస్ట్ దే హ్యావ్ టు కంప్లీట్ ద వర్క్ షీట్స్ ఆర్ ఇన్ ద టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ ఆల్సో దే హ్యావ్ గివెన్ సమ్ స్పేస్ టు ఫర్ ఫిల్లింగ్ అప్ ద గ్యాప్స్ సో టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ లో అది అయిపోయిన తర్వాత వర్క్ బుక్ లో అది అయిపోయిన తర్వాత వర్క్ షీట్స్ చేసిన తర్వాతనే మనం యాక్టివిటీ దగ్గరికి వెళ్తాం అనమాట ద టీచర్ ప్రెసెంట్స్ ఎ డెమో ఆఫ్ కటింగ్ ద స్ట్రాస్ ఇన్ టు లింక్స్ సో హియర్ వన్ పేపర్ స్ట్రా అండ్ దెన్ హౌ టు కట్ ద లింక్స్ అంటే పేపర్ పేపర్ కి ఒక లింక్ ఉండాలి కదా సో ఇట్లాగా డెమాన్స్ట్రేషన్ వైల్ డూ వైల్ గివింగ్ ద ఇన్స్ట్రక్షన్స్ వి మస్ట్ do the activity then they can understand see here cut the straw uh, like this into five pieces so five small pieces like this and then teacher presents a demo of creating a garland based on the sum she has solved so arrange your flowers according so yeah, uh, with the help of the thread and needle we have to arrange a garland like this we have to do one activity the teacher must give a demo so take one flower like this and put a straw straw like this and then you create one garland and again after every two flowers one leaf so like this you have to one straw and one flower and then again one flower after two flowers you you must put one leaf so ila demonstration teacher chestu gana instructions isthe valaku chaala clear ga ekkutay anamata so here arrange your flowers according to the sums you solved so teacher tana flash card lo unde twenty sums ni tanu chesindi so vaalla sums lo unde sums ni ee vidhanga cheyal ani cheppi cheptad anamata so here i have prepared this garland and ఇలాగే మీరు కూడా చేయండి సో ఇలా విజయ్ కి వాళ్ళకి టూ ఫ్లవర్స్ తర్వాత ఒక లీఫ్ వచ్చేటట్లు ఇట్లాగా గార్లాండ్ మనం చేసిద్దాం విజయ్ కి దేవికి అని షీ వుడ్ గివ్ ద ఇన్స్ట్రక్షన్స్ టు ద స్టూడెంట్స్ నెక్స్ట్ స్లైడ్ ప్లీజ్ సో హియర్ స్టెప్ ఫైవ్ మేకింగ్ ద ఫ్లవర్ గార్లాండ్ టీచర్ ప్రెసెంట్స్ ఎ డెమో ఆఫ్ క్రియేటింగ్ ఎ గార్లాండ్ బేస్డ్ ఆన్ ద సమ్ షీ హ్యాడ్ సాల్వ్ అది ఇందాక మనం చేసినాం అనమాట string the flowers based on the solutions to the problems solved in the worksheet worksheet lo manam chesina twenty a problems ni prakaram manam ee flower garland ni manam tayar chestam connect the so here we have to give the instruction string the flowers based on the solutions to the problems solved in the worksheet that instruction should be clear meeru aap meeke worksheet lo emaithe ye lekkaithe undo ఆ లెక్క ప్రకారమే మీరు ఆ పూలని గుచ్చండి సో ఇక్కడ మన డెమో దాంట్లో ఎలా ఉంది సెవెన్ ఫ్లవర్స్ అండ్ సెవెన్ బ్లూ ఫ్లవర్స్ అండ్ ఫైవ్ రెడ్ కలర్ ఫ్లవర్స్ విత్ స్ట్రాస్ ఎన్ని లీవ్స్ ఇలాగ ఒక్కొక్కరికి ఒక్కొక్క కార్డ్ ఇస్తాం దాని ప్రకారమే వాళ్ళు చేయాలన్నమాట సో ఇఫ్ దే గెట్ ఎనీ డౌట్ దే క్లారిఫై అమౌంగ్ ద గ్రూప్ ఆర్ ఎల్స్ వీ మే హెల్ప్ సో ఆ తర్వాత అయిన తర్వాత ఇంకొక ఇన్స్ట్రక్షన్ ఏంటంటే కనెక్ట్ ఫ్లవర్స్ అండ్ లీవ్ with the straws so here ee straws tho connect cheyal anamata flowers ni leaves ni ila straws tho connect cheyali anedi instruction kuda manam ivvali string one leaf after every two flowers after every two flowers connect one leaf so he to give the instruction by showing so that they can understand the english words in the maths classroom and then you have 5 minutes 5 minutes time to prepare your garlands you can start so these type of instructions will certainly help through so we must ask some icqs also how do you connect the flowers with the leaves so they have to tell with straws very good string one leaf after every two flowers yes very good how much time do you have how much time do you have so 5 minutes so we must ensure that they understand the instructions or not next slide please so here the procedure presentation and feedback teacher instructs a member from each team to place their garland on the stand so here in the puppet show 
we we already saw one stand there we already set one stand for the puppet show vijay and devi so they have to uh, go and present so vijay and devi kinda ka maati icharu kada avi garlands chestam ani so vaallu chesina atuvanti aa garlands for example 20th vijay so kabatti idu oka 10 flowers idu oka 10 flowers so 20 plus remaining 3 flowers so idi kuda vaallu cheppal anamata ee remaining 3 so vilaki ikkada additions vastai subtraction kuda వస్తుందనమాట సో అందరూ కూడా వాళ్ళ వాళ్ళ గ్రూప్ లోంచి చేసిన యొక్క గార్లెంట్స్ ని అక్కడ ప్రజెంట్ చేయాలి దిస్ ఈస్ ద లెటెస్ట్ చెక్ ద ఆన్సర్స్ ఇక్కడ ఇన్స్ట్రక్షన్స్ ఏంటంటే వన్ ఆఫ్ యూ ఫ్రమ్ రెడ్ గ్రూప్ ప్లీజ్ కమ్ విత్ యువర్ గార్లెంట్ టు దేవి స్టాండ్ అండ్ వన్ ఫ్రమ్ బ్లూ టీమ్ అండ్ వన్ ఫ్రమ్ ఎల్లో టీమ్ లెటెస్ చెక్ ద ఆన్సర్స్ టుగెదర్ సో దే హ్యావ్ టు కౌంట్ so they are vallu devi ki numbers nerpistunnaru kada english lo so they have to count 1 2 3 5 6 7 8 9 10 so here mana objective endi learning objective valaki counting raavali tarvata place ones place ane place value face value anedi first lesson lo undi so okokati 10 10 ga manam create chesina so avanni kuda ikkada meet ayyadaniki వాళ్ళ ప్రజెంటేషన్ కి విజువలైజేషన్ కి ప్రాబ్లమ్ సాల్వింగ్ కి అకాడమిక్ స్టాండర్డ్స్ అన్ని మీట్ అవుతారు అట్ ద సేమ్ టైమ్ దే కెన్ అండర్స్టాండ్ ద ఇన్స్ట్రక్షన్స్ ఇన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ ఇన్ ద కమింగ్ ఇంగ్లీష్ మీడియం నెక్స్ట్ స్లైడ్ ప్లీజ్ ఇట్స్ టైమ్ టు బిగిన్ ప్లీజ్ స్టాప్ టాకింగ్ చిల్డ్రన్ హ్యావ్ యూ బీన్ టు ఎ ఫ్లవర్ మార్కెట్ వీ హ్యావ్ two special guests from there today who need our help chen everybody vijay and devi are here with a request devi devi what vijay devi i need your help Oh sure with pleasure I want two garlands from 23 flowers and then each garland must contain 10 flowers and after every two flowers you must put a leaf don't forget it understand Oh my god you're giving too many instructions how can i remember i don't know how to count also how can i count 10 5 thank you rachna garu for thank for you the... for this opportunity with another interesting topic thank you thank you very much rachna garu for a very interesting uh, session in mathematics especially when you come up with an hours i'm sure the children would be actively engaged and no one would want to miss out in participating in it uh Uh, with that uh, ismail garu if there are any questions we can take you for a chat thank you very much madam thank you both of you for a uh, good presentations uh, though there is a technical glitches uh, you overcome all those things and uh, had given good uh, nice presentation the puppet show all is very beautiful uh, the, the way how she decorated and all those things special appreciation for that uh, we have a few questions ma'am one is a uh, Suresh Kumar how can we differentiate order and command so when you both order and command have a, a reflection of making it sound a bit rude as such so when you place an order uh, is in the classroom context yeah it, it is better that you use please and can you or could like this is one of the slides because when you order or command it gives a, a tv between an owner and a and a, a worker who's working under so it's better not to have that sort of a, a hierarchy in the classroom so it's it's suggested that you have a more subtle way of getting things done so order and command are for words that you could use uh, in place of use yes. thank you very much ma'am uh, pushparaj garu from gedelur prakasham district he is asking that first of all he is saying that the best uh, leader is one who follows his own instructions with the tag uh, he is asking one question instructions orders directions commands please tell in the sequence of authority 
so uh, commands and or yes sir instructions orders the uh, directions commands please tell in the sequence of authority so the meaning of directions and commands instructions will vary in different contexts like if you say directions towards uh, probably a bus stop etc so let us look at the uh, the classroom context or a school environment you most likely are given you give instructions inside your classroom directions are usually giveers or probably your seniors commands again there are different leadership right, uh, roles that your principals would play some principals fav, um, would be favorable for a more authoritative uh, leadership style where they would command certain things that the teachers have to do uh, now if you look inside the classrooms a uh, classroom situation the command would shift now you could give commands within an activity like for let's say simon says the command is stand up or sit down so the context differs from one place to another strictly speaking in the classroom context commands would be specifically to the tasks and activities that you uh, prepare instructions would be related to how you complete that particular tasks and activity and directions then again if you have a task which involves direction like first you finish the in which involves sequences that's when you use directions i hope it answers the question thank you so much ma'am another person from his uh, from him only how did body language has its impact on instructions at end of the day any form of communication has to be natural in the classroom sir. so when we speak in a natural context we always by default have a body language which will come which comes unconsciously so it is better that you create that natural setting in your classroom where you have a good rapport with your students that can be achieved through a uh, through body language a simple example is just try for yourself instructing without any body language and see the difference that it makes when you actually include body language in terms of gestures or in terms of make, making changing your tone and pitch so you yourself will feel that using a uh, body language to co communicate is a lot more expressive meaningful and also gets the attention of the listener thank you so much ma'am uh, baskar got it he is uh, telling that what will happen when the teacher not follows the classroom instruction so that would be a big problem then which is why we suggested that no matter what activity you plan always do a demonstration so when you yourself are doing a demonstration it is a check for yourself that okay this has to be replicated by your students support every instruction and activity with a demonstration thank you so much ma'am so with this uh, i really appreciate the efforts made by you both of you men really fantastic presentation uh, very colorful also hope uh, uh, teachers of andhra pradesh uh, definitely make use of this uh, presentations uh, and definitely they will keep uh, all these things in practice in their classrooms with this uh, i specially thank uh, both of you dr umar ravi garu as well sorry purnima ravi garu and uh, rachana garu thank you thank you very much and for tomorrow uh, on day 16th uh, we'll meet with another interesting topic uh, classroom trans uh, transactions of sample lesson in english so dr k n shobha garu will uh, resource for that topic uh, for till tomorrow uh, we'll say goodbye and we'll meet tomorrow so till then please stay tuned with our youtube channel and facebook thank you very much ma'am namaste thank you everyone for watching thank you everyone Goodbye for today.